Rev up your engines. Eric Stone says, hey, Scotty, I got an 07 Honda Civic Sport Coupe with a five-speed manual transmission. When I shift to fifth and accelerate, the RPMs go up faster than the speed. Well, you need a new clutch. Your clutch is slipping. Fifth gear is the lowest ratio one. So the more torque your engine has, the easier it's going to slip. So when you get into fifth and it starts, it means the clutch is starting to slip. So put a clutch in it soon before it wrecks the flywheel. Flywheels cost a lot of money. The clutch kit's only like, you can get a good clutch kit for that for 120 bucks, all the new parts, but you don't get a flywheel. You buy that rather than wait until it eats up the flywheel. And then you're going to spend three times that on the flywheel alone. So it's slipping. It's time to put another clutch in it. But Josie does. TV says, Scotty, my automatic transmission won't move on its own and drive in really cold weather, even after it warms up for 34 minutes unless I hit the gas. Is this normal in cold weather? It's an old, old new beetle. No, it's not normal. It means your transmission's starting to go out. So, baby the thing, warm it up before you drive it. And as soon as it gets warm in your area, and the weather's so nutty, who knows what that's going to be? Sell the stupid thing. Because it means your automatic transmission is starting to go out. That's typical in a new beetle. And in order to redo an automatic transmission in a new beetle, the last time I had a customer have that done, I don't do it, but I know guys that do it that are experts, and it cost them about five grand to have it completely done over so that it worked right. So my advice is baby it, warm it up, and as soon as the weather gets warm outside, sell that thing and get rid of it and never buy another one. Marvin says, hey, Scotty, is a 2007 Volvo S60R all-wheel drive any good? Thanks. Well, you know, they are fun to drive. 60Rs are zippy. They're fun to drive around. It's all-wheel drive on top of being a Volvo, and I'm sure it's an automatic transmission. They're endless money pits as they age. Every customer of mine that bought one of those things, they liked them to begin with, but as they started to break down, they started thinking, hmm, did I buy the wrong car? And if they kept it another year or two, they realized, yes, they bought the wrong car and they got rid of it. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of those things, it's an 07, it's 12 years old. If you can get it dirt cheap and keep it for a weekend toy, it can be fun, but I would not buy a car like that and pay any kind of serious money and expect to drive it every day. Of course, Hinton says, Scotty, do you have any experience with the used 2011 Hyundai Genesis V6 as a nice commuter car? Here they're relatively reliable. Yes, they are relatively reliable, but that said, I would not buy a V6 Hyundai that's used with many miles on it. I mean, if it was low mileage, yeah. If you get a good price, you might be able to drive it a while. But if it's got a hundred something thousand miles on it, I personally wouldn't buy it because uh, the V6 Hyundai's, as they age, they're very expensive to repair. They're the type of car that if somebody buys one new and they drive it for a hundred thousand miles and they don't have any problems, they like it, oh, great, you know? But then it's time to sell it on rather than to try to keep going because those things won't go like a Toyota or a Honda where they'll go two, three, four hundred thousand miles. They become money pits long before that. They have a much more limited lifespan. Thomas Hall says, what's good for buying classic Ford Bronco? What year should I get? Ford Broncos, if you like the Bronco style, and they were really the original SUV when it comes down to it. Go get an older one that's carbureted. You don't want the ones that had the throttle body fuel injection because they had a lot of problems with them. But get an old carbureted one and fix it up because they're simple, can run a long time, all the parts are readily available. You can still get parts for them because people like them. And they had common engines that Ford used in a lot of their stuff. And I got customers with them that love them. It's their toys. Of course, down here in Texas, they don't rust, so you don't have to worry about the frames rotting. You would just say if you're up north, you don't want to buy one with a rotten frame. Crawl under it, whack it with a hammer, and if the frame's all cracking and rotten, don't even buy it, then it's not worth anything. Cars OP says it's a 2000 Pontiac Firebird 3.8, a good sports car. Okay, here's the thing. The 3.8, it's a V6 engine. Most people don't want a V6 engine in that Firebird. They want the V8. Now, if you're happy with the power and speed that the V6 engine puts out, go right ahead. Just realize that it's never going to be a collector's item, so don't pay a lot of money for it because everybody wants the V8 engines. They don't want those V6s. Now, if you are going to buy one, you want to make sure that the engine and transmission are in good shape. Pay a guy like me to check it out for sure, because they can have problems. They're GM products. But if it checks out okay and you get it at a good price, it can be a fun car to drive around. Just realize it's never going to be worth that much money because it's got the six-cylinder engine that nobody really wants to collect them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.